you should see the presentation now okay yes okay awesome so <clears throat> as arthur mentioned we will talk about the monitoring today uh, and we'll discuss the, the main architectures of the monitoring and the ex examples of the monitoring with the parameters uh, and <clears throat> traditionally we'll start with the monitoring pipeline so how we usually set up the monitoring and what is the main stages so the first stage is to expose the metric so if you have the application or service or microservice uh, you should care uh, about some kind of endpoint which will expose the metrics outside of your application and then you can go to the step step number two uh, it's collect so uh, some ecosystems has the embedded collector and sometimes you need the external collector which will actually um, check the endpoint for for the metrics uh, collect that matrix, parse it, and put it to the store. Store, it's uh, step number three. Uh, so there are a lot of different storages. We will discuss the, the, the most popular storages. And when we actually store the metrics, we can uh, get the, the main benefits from it. So we can visualize the metrics and we can set up some kind of alerting from that metrics. So, and this can give us some some opportunities how how we can manipulate with our infrastructure and how we can react on the in, uh, on the emergency incidents so uh, before that let's talk about the metrics what actually is that it's a small part of the theory so the metrics usually the metrics is some kind of the scalar value which describes some some condition of the system uh, or some condition of the infrastructure components and usually um, the, the metrics could be the the various and um, actually what you will measure with that metrics it depends on, like uh, from the purposes on your application of your application um, so um, let's go to the uh, discussion about the um, metric storages so there are a lot of different metric storages and actually you can use the different tools and different software to store the metrics so um, as we decided before yeah the metrics is some kind of the scalar value so actually the metrics metrics record metric event it consists from the two elements the one element is a timestamp and the second one is a value so according to that so metrics it's some kind of value in some uh, in some time timeline on, on, in some point on the timeline so we can use some kind of the cloud services for the storing of the metrics and also for the visualization and uh, for the alerting and um, However, we can use it just as a storage. So the most popular providers like Azure, AWS, and the Google Cloud Platform has its own monitoring service, which allows to collect the metrics, not just only from the infrastructure components and cloud service, uh, but also are able to store the metrics from the uh, external sources. So it means that you can like from your application, you can push your custom metrics to that storage and after that you can operate with that metrics. Uh, the interface of usage um, uh, almost similar. Uh, however, before usage, you need to check the documentation and verify how you, how you can integrate with that services. Another thing that you can use the SQL databases so I put here just the most popular databases. However, any SQL database will work for you because like you can just architect the simple table with uh, two fields. One field will be timestamp, the second one will be the value. So it's a simple model of the metric storage. Um, however, the SQL databases 
has some some kind of limitation and as we can uh, get the lot of metrics in a short period of times so it means that it can affect the SQL databases and make some kind of unexpected behavior for us so it's not preferable to use the SQL databases um, because we actually have the solution for that which is like strictly recommended to use uh, to be used as a metric storage and actually this is a time series databases so time series databases is some kind of database uh, where you just can store the uh, data in a format of the metric like uh, you will have the timestamp which will be like your primary key and the second one it will be value and actually nothing else uh, another solution it could be the uh, like i put it into the uh, section uh, which called others because it's not the sql databases and this is not actually the time series database however it could be also used for the um, storing of the matrix data so it's a uh, elastic search uh, usually it's used in in, uh, uh, in scope of the elk stack yeah, and there is some kind of collector which called metric bit. So metric bit could collect a, a different kind of metrics and put it, push it actually to, to Elasticsearch. And then you can visualize it with a Kibana. So I think it's a well-known fact. So, and like I didn't add it to, to the list because it's a, like a main topic and actually the Prometheus um, and what we need to understand that Prometheus is not actually the database and not is not the storage so it's a monitoring system so it means that um, the main components are used not just for the storing of the metrics uh, but it has the components which will like, cover all the uh, requirements to like collect and actually visualize and alert the metrics data. So this project was built by SoundCloud and after a couple of years, it was like migrated uh, under uh, Cloud Native Compute Foundation. Uh, actually, this, this community uh, is well known uh, by the maintaining of the Kubernetes. And the Prometheus is the second hosted project after, Kuber after Kuber Kubernetes. And like uh, on, on the second place by popularity. Uh, what is the main components? Actually, um, Prometheus has um, various components. However, um, we will talk about the main components. So the main component is the uh, like the general component. It's a Prometheus server. So Prometheus server. Um, it's a database and the engine uh, which allows to scrap the metrics and actually store it in the in the persistent storage um, the second component is a push gateway so push gateway is um, uh, for uh, the main purpose of push gateway is incoming connection so you can ju not just scrap the metrics with the Prometheus, but you can also push the metrics uh, to Prometheus. So this mm, usually used for the short life jobs. Uh, for example, you have some, some kind of cron jobs which are running very quickly. Yeah? And for example, if you use the server discovery, which uh, we will discuss um, later, uh, so it could be not enough time for Prometheus to scrap the metrics from these short life jobs. So for that, for that cases, we have the push gateway. And the alert manager, uh, it's a separate service of uh, Prometheus ecosystem, uh, which actually gives you ability to set some kind of rules and uh, according to some condition, like notify the the team and the team members here actually described 
and demonstrated the, the main uh, architecture of the Prometheus and uh, like the possible ways uh, of usage. So you can see that the Prometheus server, it uh, consists from the, um, actually the scrapping mechanism and uh, time series database. Uh, and this time series database actually stores the, the data uh, locally uh, in the persistent storage. Also, we have the uh, push gateway, uh, which can actually, which is, is, is listening and like get the metrics, uh, incoming metrics uh, from the um, external targets. And also we can see the alert manager, which actually uh, can uh, notify uh, via different channels. And uh, also here is presented the Grafana. It's the, the most popular tool for uh, visualization of, of, of the data. And it doesn't work specifically with the uh, Prometheus. However, in the most of cases, like uh, the usage of Prometheus is uh, usually with Grafana. And actually Prometheus has its own um, language of queries and like external sources can, external tools and external software can use uh, such kind of language to query the Prometheus database and uh, like get some ranges of uh, metrics data or some kind of aggregation of metrics data. However, it's like not the main goal for today. And we can skip. But if it's interesting for you, you can actually check about the prompt you all. Um, actually, um, in most of cases, when we like, have the Kubernetes cluster, the easiest solution to monitor the Kubernetes cluster itself and the microservices which are running inside of the Kubernetes cluster, it's using of the Prometheus. Uh, how it actually works so according to, to that diagram so we can have some kind of uh, Prometheus server which will scrap uh, the Kubernetes cluster uh, node exporters so node exporters uh, it's actually the exporters we will we will talk about the exporters uh, ex exporters today um, however uh, like behind the scene, uh, this is some kind of services which expose the endpoints. And this, uh, like when we um, check this endpoint, uh, we can get the, the main metrics related to the um, underlying nodes of the Kubernetes cluster. And also um, some additional component, and sometimes it's called uh, Adam, which called uh, Cube state metrics. So it's a component which like scrap the like it which expose the metrics from the main Kubernetes um, components uh, like IP server, etcd, scheduler, control manager, and so on. And also in the Kubernetes cluster, when we like, have the microservice architecture um, infrastructure, um, so we can like expose the metrics from the, our microservice. And Prometheus also can get these metrics and scrap it and store it in, in the internal database. Uh, sometimes uh, we can like, meet with some, 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 some terminology uh, which called federation. So what is the federation? Federation, it's like it's like a quorum of the Prometheus servers. Mm, it could be two kind of um, uh, uh, Prometheus federations. It could be the cross server federation and it also, also could be the um, uh, hierarchical uh, federation. And like the purposes of usage of all of them, it's like to scale the Prometheus deployment and um, cover all the advantage on this system. 
uh, here is demonstrated the, the, the cross server uh, federation architecture. So um, on this screen, we see that we have um, like one central Prometheus uh, server, which will scrap the data from another Prometheus, um, uh, Prometheus servers, which are deployed for the different, different environment. Actually, we can not we can not just scrap the data itself. Um, we can also scrap the uh, aggregations. Yeah, if you don't if you don't want to scrap all the data, yeah, we can uh, scrap some kind of mean of this data. And then, like according to that aggregation, we can then visualize it and set up the alerting for all that things. Um, like, what is the exporters, uh, exporters and why we actually need the exporters? Um, the most of the popular applications and the software um, usually has the embedded exporters, like an embedded endpoint, um, which Prometheus can examine and scrap the metrics from it. But sometimes when we have some kind of third party application and actually if you develop some kind of third party application, we need to care that we have the endpoint uh, which could be used by Prometheus. So actually the exporter is the way how you can uh, like expose your metrics from your application. And usually the uh, exporter is some kind of um, like uh, external subservice of, of your microservice, yeah? Uh, so if we are talking about the Kubernetes, um, usually it's, it can work as a, as a sidecar container. Yeah, so you, for example, you have a, one pod, in that pod you have the one container for your application and one sidecar container um, for your metrics exporter. And for example, if you like, scale your deployment to, uh, for example, three replicas, so you will have the three different instance of the exporter and you can get the data from three different uh, instance of your application. Uh, like it's a one possible way for that. However, um, uh, it could be done via injecting of the endpoint in, inside of your application, but this is not a good practice and like, um, usually everything what is related to the logging uh, metrics and tracing it should be dedicated and it should be separated from your main application where you can get the expertise because i mentioned that there are a lot of um, already prepared uh, exporters which you can use so the uh, like main uh, sources it could be the official Prometheus site which has the catalog of um, all possible <clears throat> all possible third third party um, exporters also there is some kind of project which called promcat um, it's uh, like uh, like an artifact store for the for the exporters and it has not just the exporters itself, but also the presets of the dashboards and the detailed instructions uh, and so on. But it's pretty young project and uh, it doesn't contain a lot of exporters. However, I think in the nearest future, they will have more. And the uh, like last one popular uh, source for the exporters actually not just for the exporters but you can find every everything there like the helm charts the kubernetes operators and so on but also the exporters for the prometheus are stored on the artifact hub actually we will review uh, uh, all that resources and like uh, we will see how, how, how we can like look up for the interesting solutions for us. 
um, like what is the main uh, Prometheus exporter development pipeline? So you need actually write the pipeline, like write the exporter itself. Yeah, and you need to like expose the metrics in the Prometheus compatible format. We will talk about the format uh, later. After that, uh, like if you're running all that things inside of the Kubernetes cluster, you need to build a Docker image and push it somewhere in the registry. After that, you need to deploy your exporter to the Kubernetes cluster if it's a standalone exporter, yeah? And if it's uh, like a part of your application and part of your microservice, you can inject it as a sidecar container. Uh, then you need to configure Prometheus to scrap the metrics. So it depends, uh, like if you use the, for example, the standalone uh, deployment of the Prometheus, you need to pass and configure it manually. However, um, there are a lot of different tools which uh, gives you ability to manage the uh, Prometheus configuration uh, in more native for Kubernetes way, and um, especially it's a Prometheus operator, and we also will talk about that. And uh, like the last step, it's uh, uh, visualize the metrics. So um, actually, it's up to you which tool you will use for that. However, like you can use the uh, Grafana because it's easy to install, easy to configure, and also there are a lot of uh, um, presets with already uh, completed uh, dashboards for you. So this will uh, save your time. Um, actually, um, according to like our call, the, we, we are good with the theoretical part. So we can like switch to the practical part. So I will uh close the presentation so the first uh, thing what we will talk it's about the first step of our uh of our uh, development pipeline so we will talk about the code so i already prepared some kind of uh, simple prometheus exporter so we will just review it so i uh, saved your time and <laughs> Like we won't spend it for the for the time like for the live coding. Oh, we don't need this guy, I think. Um, let me think. Maybe before that, um, let's check one more thing, one more very important thing. Uh, like we also need to add some something to our uh, theoretical knowledge. So let's look on the uh, Prometheus data model. So how the metric record usually looks like. So we have the metric name. Also, we can have the labels attached to this metric. So usually labels contains the, some kind of additional metadata. However, it's uh, optional thing. And the last one actually, it's a, it's a value. And usually value is stored in the uh, float 64 uh, uh, variable. So here is the main pattern, how the actually metric can look. And actually here is the sample. Yeah, for example, this is the name of your uh, metric. And this is the additional labels. And actually after the curly brackets, uh, you should have some kind of value here. And like we also, like beside the data model, we also need to understand which kind of metrics we have, because we have just four types of metrics. However, it covers um, all our purposes, like uh, about the data which we can collect and um, the data which could give some some benefit for us. Um, actually, the main uh, metric types, it's a counter, gouge, a histogram, and the summary. So before we start to look up on our code, let's make the 
let me give you a, a simple explanation. So what usually, for what we usually use the counter kind of metric. So if we need some kind of counter and we need to expose uh, some kind of data which like, will be increased, but not be not won't be in decreased. So for example, you have um, like after the starting of your server, uh, like you uh, collecting the count of the requests. So um, after some time, you will see that the count of the request to your server will be increased. But uh, there is no like ability to decrease the count of um, uh, of this request. So it's good to uh, collect some kind of um, like so some kind of counts of some some event. If you like want to um, have the ability to increase and decrease uh, the value, so we need to use the gouge uh, type of metric. So usually like, gouge is used for the um, uh, measuring of some some values which like, could be increased and also it could be decreased. So for example, it could be like the percentage of the CPU load, or for example, it could be, uh, I don't know, temperature of the CPU cores or the count of, uh, of memory on your machine or something like that. Uh, also, we have some kind of um, histogram um, metric type. So um, it's, uh, it looks pretty complicated. However, it's uh, like a very simple type of metric which we can use. Um, so we just have some kind of, um, some kind of bucket. Bucket it's um, something like a container, yeah? And we can push uh, like a seri series of data to this container. And the histogram uh, metric will, uh, like will calculate for us the um, total sum of, of all collected data from that series also will give us the count of the elements in this in, in this series and also uh, will give us some um, uh, cumulative data like percentiles and so on so when we will look up for the matrix itself we will see how, how it looks like and the uh, and the summary. The summary actually is uh, almost the same as uh, what is the histogram. However, the summary doesn't give the percentiles; it just gives the total sum, and also it gives the count of the elements. So it's a, a more lightweighted version of the histogram. And actually, the summary is um, is based on the histogram itself. Uh, that's all what we need uh, about the theoretical part. Yeah, so we uh, have all all things what we need, and like, we can jump to reviewing uh, of the of the op uh, exporter code. So uh, for implementation, I um, like uh, I took the Python for that because usually. All DevOps engineers are familiar with Python, and like, to write the exporters, you don't need um, don't need to have some deep knowledge of Python. So it's pretty simple. You don't need to know of the um, OOP or something like that. So you can write everything as a simple script. Uh, however, um, like the Prometheus itself, it also uh, release some kind of libraries for the different programming languages. Uh, and I think that like here is listed like a Go, Java, Python, and Ruby. However, I think that it should be some kind of uh, like libraries and wrappers uh, for uh, another programming language. So I'm totally sure about that. Um, and if we use Python, so we just need to, like we can implement everything from scratch. So we can like format the data manually and so on. 
but as we have the SDK, so SDK will give uh, us ability like to make everything simple um, and actually to start work with that, we just need to install the um, additional library and then we can start to write the um, exporter code. So now finally, <laughs> we already uh, can look on the code. So uh, this is the ba basic stuff. So um, let's look on this on this line and let's um, let's see what we actually export here. So we export here some kind of uh, helper, uh, which give uh, us ability give us ability to um, expose our um, our metrics and our data via HTTP. So it will create the HTTP server for us, very simple HTTP server. Um, and also here is the, the main wrappers for the like main types of, of metrics. So now we actually know everything about that. Then we actually uh, construct the, the metrics itself. So you just need to define the variable and like define the class. So usually the um, it takes um, like three three parameters. However, the, the last one is optional, so you can like leave just uh, just two parameters. So the first one it's like the actual name of your metric. So it's how it will be visible in the in the exporter and how it will be stored inside of the Prometheus. The second one, it's um, the description. So description is also visible in um, in the exporter endpoint. So you like this. This will give ability for the like rest of the engineers who is not familiar with your um, exporter and or doesn't have ability to look up on the source code. So they will have the like description. And like according to that description, uh, they can operate with that kind of metric. So you can put as many data here as needed, or I just put the like a sample value. And the last one, it's a labels. Um, actually, it's um, usually it's a list of the names for the labels. So we don't put like the values for these labels. However, we need to define the possible list of the of this label of these labels which we uh, will be able to use uh, like in, in the in the future uh, so here i just added the one simple uh, one simple label just to demonstrate how this mechanism works and here like in the same way we actually um, combined the uh, four for for um, type types of metric. Uh, here is the main method. So we, we will uh, like uh, back to it af uh, after. So let's look on the main part of the program. Yeah, so this is the main part. We just like configure the logging. So when we will run it inside of the, like run our exporter inside of the Kubernetes, we will see the detailed logs. So it's important and like, this will make uh, your life easier. And actually then we just need to like configure and start the HTTP endpoint for our um, for our exporter. So like we can hard code this uh, port number. However, like it's a good practice to give the ability uh, reconfigure the applications with the environment variables from the outside. Then we need to configure the pooling interval seconds. So what is the pooling interval seconds? It's like the intervals, um, like it's a time between uh, which your uh, exporter will uh, like collect and expose the metrics. So here is uh, like the five seconds. So what it means? Like it means, for example, if you will um, examine the metrics, uh, like a exporter endpoint, like um, 
and uh, like it will be like in two seconds you will get this endpoint like twice so you will see the the same set of data however after the five seconds the data will be updated yeah so it will be like collected and presented for you so and every every five seconds it will collect the data and like this is um, infinite uh, process and here we just handle the exception just for case and this is our main method which we call um, to collect and like build the matrix so here you can write uh, any kind of logic yeah so actually we don't need this one any kind of logic um, so i put uh, for each metric some kind of random data yeah so for example for the counter so all the time i just use the uh, int method so it means that i increase the counter by one and also what i do actually before uh, making the operations with the metrics uh, i set the labels because for example you can have the same metric but with the different labels, yeah. For example, you can have the like a counter metric, um, but for the three different machines. So we will show the, uh, we, we will see that how it actually works. Um, the same for the gouge. So for the gouge, I just put the random value, yeah, in range from one to uh, 256, and like all the time it will will be updated uh, with uh, with a random value. For the histogram, so I just um, like started the random loop and fill it with the random values, yeah, and we will see like um, what we will get in the uh, like in the future. For the summary, like it is, it is the same. Yeah, if you will look on the main documentation, uh, like you can increase, yeah. What's the main 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 method? So you can increase the increment by one, and you also can increment by some some kind of specific value if needed. Uh, the same for the so like you can like decrement if it's a gouge uh, kind of metric, or you can like set it for some kind of specific value. Uh, for the summary and for the histogram, you have method which called observe. So observe uh, uh, it's the same like a push so you it, it means that you push this value to like to the series for 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 this metric and after that uh, like this metric will be calculated for you and beside that uh, we also saw that we use some kind of http server however um, actually uh, this library uh, allows you to use like like it, it provides some kind of the standard server. However, if you are familiar with uh, another uh, server engine based on the Python, so you can use any of it. So you can even like integrate it in the Flask if needed. So, and also uh, like this exporter, it could not just export the metrics itself, it also can push to the gateway. So if needed. So in that case, you just need to put here the endpoint for your push gateway and actually add, add, add the labels and um, configure it in such way. Uh, it also supports some kind of the authentication uh, if needed. Um, and like you are able to extend this uh, this library and also use the multi-processing if you like, collect a lot of lot of different metrics so you can do it simultaneously uh, that's all about the library itself so how we will build it so i prepared some kind of very very simple docker file so in this Docker file, uh, we use the Python Alpine. So I can explain you why like, we can use the Alpine, but not, for example, the mm, standard Debian-based Python. Because the exporter, usually it's a sidecar, so it should be the lightweighted. Because 
for example, if like your application will be deployed and it needs, uh, it will be need to like pull the uh, whole Python image. So this can increase the time uh, of your application deployment. So just do it in such way. So the rest of the things I think is pretty clear and straightforward. And we also have a set of the manifest for all that things. So let's try to like start all that things and uh, like check uh, how how it works, like see how it works. So the main thing uh, from which we will start is like. Uh, installation of the Prometheus operator. So I'm pretty sure that you are familiar what is the operators and how it works. So this is a pretty simple operator, which will um, like uh, detect the new custom resources in your Kubernetes cluster. And usually in that custom resources, we will describe the main Prometheus rules and and so on. So we will we will review all, all of them. So let's um, start from the installation. So we have a bundle file. You can take the bundle file from the main Prometheus operator repo. So here is it. Yeah, so I copied it locally because it's pretty huge. However, you can install it directly from the GitHub if needed. Um, let's install it. Uh, but um, one more thing, like it's a good practice to like, install all the things which is uh, related to the monitoring to the separate namespace. So let's create the namespace first. Let's call it monitoring. Okay, now let's install the, the bundle itself. And let's put it to the monitoring namespace. Okay, so as you can see, a lot of different uh, custom resource definition was uploaded. So it means that now you are able to, to use it and create the custom resources. Okay, so uh, the main thing what we actually need to, to do, uh, because with this operator, we can manage the rules uh, uh, and configuration for the Prometheus. And also we can like deploy the Prometheus. So uh, if you remember from the main screen of the, um, I, I don't see, let me, let me check. I don't think that we can, we can see it here. Um, however, operator will care about the configuration and about the operator deployment itself. So, um, let's do the next thing uh, we we actually before we will create the prometheus yeah so here like the custom resource and we can create the prometheus itself however we have the rbac enabled in our cluster so we need to create some service account and bind the role for this service account um, to like allow the prometheus itself and the prometheus operator uh, like get the data from the cluster to, to fill in the configuration, uh, fill in the configuration. Yeah, correct. So um, we need to create the service account. So it's pretty simple. Then we need to create the cluster role. So it's um, some kind of read-only cluster role. So we just need to get the nodes, uh, list of the nodes, node metrics, list of the services and points and pods. And sometimes we need to access to the config maps, but usually not. Um, and we can get the metrics from the ingresses um, like if they are enabled. So let's create the, let's go to the manifest folder and let's um, install all that components. Um, apply minus F. Uh, so we will start with the service account. Okay, service account is created. The second one will be cluster role. Okay, and we also need to create the 
cluster role binding. Okay, so we have all the things ready, so we can actually install our Prometheus. Okay, so we created the custom resource for the Prometheus. So if you will look on the um, list of the pods in our monitoring namespace, we will see that now we have the uh, Prometheus instance. And also we should have the Prometheus service for that. Okay, so let's, um, let me open some kind of background terminal. Let's expose it to our local machine to so create the ingresses and so on. Uh, so we need SVC and it, it called Prometheus operated. Uh, Okay, and minus n monitoring. Okay. Uh, okay, we missed the list of the ports. So we need the port number 9090. Let's see, let's expose it to the same uh, port on our local machine. Okay, so now we can actually go to our browser, go to the standard Prometheus endpoint. And actually we will see the Prometheus UI. So it's pretty simple and this will be enough actually to verify the metrics and so on. So let's look on our configuration. So like here we will see the actual configuration and Prometheus operator will care about this configuration. And actually it will uh, rebuild this configuration for us automatically so we don't need to fill in all that things uh, all the time okay so let's go to the application itself and let's actually uh, install the applic uh, our like exporter application uh, so we will go to the prometheus operator we will go to the manifest so let's look up on this manifest so the first one it's a pretty simple simple deployment um, you can see that like we pass the environment variable to configure the exporter itself and we also expose the port so it's a very important thing like we expo expose the port um, on which our exporter container is running uh, and we will bind it to the um, kubernetes service soon and we use the alias so i'll show you like why we like, should use aliases and like not the port numbers itself. And we also create the three replicas to see like how it works in scale. And here is the service. So um, very simple. So we uh, the main thing what we need to do, we need to configure the labels. Uh, and you will understand why when we will look on the service monitor. So uh, the service will select the pods with a label uh, app simple prometheus exporter so here we see that this label will be attached to the pods and like we are labeled this service also and as you can see we use the target port like usually uh, there is a numeric value he value here however in the latest versions of the Kubernetes, we can use the aliases for that. And I strongly recommend you to use aliases because in that case, you will be need like to, for example, change the port. You can change the port just in one place, like change, change it here and the alias will be the same. And we need to set up the service monitor. So what is the service monitor? Service monitor is some kind of like resource which should be operated by Prometheus operator. It will be grabbed by Prometheus operator and will be converted to the Prometheus configuration. So uh, here we need to put the selectors. So usually in these selectors, like we pushed the labels. So this is the labels of the service. So here is the service and here is the service monitor. So it's actually uh, actual labels of the service, not the pods, but the service. Then we need to, uh, to put the namespace selector so we can like match namespace uh, by name or by labels if needed 
So it's also very useful. However, this is the optional, but we pushed it here. And the endpoint, so usually we put here the alias for the service port. So as we have the alias for the service port here, we can reuse it here. And the interval, it's like an optional thing. Uh, I pushed it just to demonstrate how it works. So this will be also integrated to the configuration. So let's start uh, with deploying of our application, QCTL apply. So our application, we will deploy to the default namespace. So let's start with the deployment. Uh, okay, I missed the folder. Okay, manifests. Um, and let's check the okay, deployment. Then we need to deploy the service. And also we need to apply the service monitor. One important thing that uh, you should, for example, if you have resources of kind service monitor, you need to deploy this kind of resources in the same namespace where your Prometheus operator works. Because in other cases, it won't be processed. So we can actually, we need to put here namespace monitoring. Okay, okay. Um, let's run the dashboard just for case. So it will be easier to visualize. So we will go to the default namespace. We can see that three pods are running and this is the service is also running here. Uh, let's verify if the configuration is updated. Yeah, as you can see, the configuration was automatically updated. So okay, magic. And now we can check the list of the targets. So. As we created the service monitor, it means that we automatically added targets to our Prometheus installation. So here's a list of our uh, like exporters, yeah? And as you can see that like Prometheus itself, it adds the uh, additional labels to the targets. So it's a default labels. And these labels also will be like uh, added to all the metrics. Okay, so now um, like let's look up for the graph of the metric and let's find our metric. So we remember that our metric starts with a word which called simple. So for example, we want to get the simple counter here yeah, and understand how it actually looks like. And if we will look here and then switch to the graph, so we will see how the how the main graph looks like. So it means like that this counter will be just increased. So nothing, nothing specific. So this kind of metric is not um, very good for the visualization, but it's good for the alert, definitely. Let's verify some kind of gouge metric. If we look on the gouge metric, execute. Okay, so. Here's the problem. Mm, okay, so sorry. Um, gouge metric. Okay, and we will delete this one. Okay, so we can see that we have the uh, like uh, random values from uh, different nodes. And when we will like point to um, to the metrics graph, we will see that um, we have the uh, lot of the labels and also we have the host label. So it's our uh, custom label, which we applied. So all that labels will be stored inside of the Prometheus itself. So it's how these metrics um, looks in the Prometheus, um, in the Prometheus itself. However, let's look how the metrics um, actually looks um, on the endpoint side. 
to understand uh, like how it looks and like how we can read it. So let's start our um, let's start our um, exporter locally. It's running on the port 9091. So let's go to the local host 9091. And we will see that some part of the matrix is collected directly from the Python. However, some kind of the matrix which we define it is also collected here. So we can see that um, under each metric we have like some kind of comments. So the first line is a help. So it's what I mentioned, like it's a description for you. So it will be visible all the time. Then uh, also in the type will be uh, like define the type of the metric itself. And as we have the like a counter here, so we can see, for example, the simple counter total. So is this like uh, this prefix, uh, this suffix, it will be added to the to the matrix by default. And here our label. And so it it, it looks like like three. Yeah. If we will reload our page, now it's 14. So all the time it will be updated and it will be increased. The next one is uh, is a gouge. So the random value all the time. Uh, if you will look on the histogram, so as I mentioned, we have like set of the values as the percentiles. We have the count of this value in the set and we also have the sum of this value. The same for the, for the summary, yeah? For the summary, we have just the count and we just have the sum. So nothing, nothing else. So we just, we don't have the person tools itself. So now, as you can see that the format of the Prometheus matrix is pretty simple. So actually you can format all, all your metrics in such format and it will be compatible with any Prometheus instance. Um, however, I recommend you to use the like official um, official uh, libraries and official connectors uh, for from the Prometheus community to develop your uh, exporters. And actually monitoring is pretty valuable thing. So this will uh, give you a lot of information and like using of the, this information, you will be able to improve your infrastructure, react on uh, some incidents and many other things. Um, I think we have the limit of the time. However, actually I've finished for today. So does anybody has um, any questions? So I'll be glad to answer. Okay, so looks like no questions. So we can actually finish.